Good afternoon. Uh, welcome to episode 965. We're going to have a little chat today about uh, commitment in a relationship. I don't mean commitment in the big C word, but more about how much of yourself you commit into the relationship. A little different. And I did a post or a meme earlier, which is a, re a repeat meme from many times before, which is relationships, relationships, which I'll again, relationships <laughs> are not 50 50, 100 100. And if you only put 50% in, you're only going to get 50% out. That seems pretty obvious, I would suspect. But I'll break it down a bit more because there's reasons, reasons why some people will choose not to commit 100% in a relationship. And some of them are rightly silly reasons, and some of them actually have impact because the thing about, about relationships is it tends, if you do it right, if you do it right, to bring up stuff issues, concerns, thoughts, questions, yourself. And if you're not dealing with any of that stuff, you may not be fully committed to your relationship. Something to think about. So let me throw some other things in your lap to play with if you really want to dive in deep since you're watching this broadcast. If you've watched my broadcast before, I tend to dive in pretty deep when I go in. So, oh, well, by the way, I will tell you about, about my replays and broadcast stuff at the end of the broadcast so you can find out more about what I've done said and spoken about over the last three years. <laughs> so my invitation to you, my encouragement to you is to look at your own relationships, either the one you're in now or when you've been in the past, and consider for yourself how fully invested you were in that relationship. Were you, in, were you fully in to participate on all levels and be that willing to be exposed, so to speak, to be vulnerable and intimate so that whatever happened you could face together? Or were you somebody who was so gun-shy because of past relationship issues, challenges, opportunities, frustrations, etc., etc., that committing to a relationship, excuse me, committing fully into a relationship was actually a very um, scary thing. So they want to be in a relationship, but at the same time, they're one foot in, one foot out because they're not too sure they won't get hurt again. Now... I've been there in my much younger years. I'm not sure if you have. I'm sure most people have because most people who are aware, conscious, caring, and loving who get into a relationship get hurt once in a while. It's kind of part of the package, part of the, um, what's we're looking for? The journey. That's a good way of putting it. Not saying ever, let me be clear. <laughs> let me be very clear. Not all relationships are going to cause you pain. Let me clear that one right away. However, being in a relationship can push buttons because that's what happens when you start taking down the walls. And for some people, being in a relationship with the walls up is the only way they can function, as I said earlier. And sometimes, sometimes it's not because they're afraid of being hurt again. It's actually because they don't want to go into a relationship and be at risk of getting hurt. They're just so afraid to even expose themselves to that possibility. Okay, I'm using expose a couple of times now. I'm wondering if that's any relevance. We'll see. So my, my passion for this I mean, it's in my, I talked about it in my book, and I've talked about it many times in before in, conference, in um, um, summits and video conferences. Committing fully to a relationship is part of the challenge of being in a relationship. It's easy to play safe and to hold back and to be at a um, surface level, I think that's the way of saying it. Whereas if you really do dive into a fully, fully immersive relationship and you commit all in, now, let me back up and call it for that a second. <laughs> I'm not saying from day one you do that, because if you do that, you may be a little bit um, unaware, blind to what's the possible. What I'm talking about is you get to that point. I'm not. I'm suggesting that you go into a relationship, you actually, actually we'll bring something else into the conversation. This is actually in response to a post that talks about a couple of days ago with somebody, so let me add this to the conversation. We have been trained by our culture to make the first date the most important thing ever. You know what I mean? Dress up right, do the right thing, make it be perfect and, and hope it works out. I am really here to, 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 um, to, to knock that one down. <laughs> For me, you know, so I for somebody else and it made a lot of sense, is that the first date is really the test drive. You haven't bought anything yet. So you are exploring a relationship. You're actually exploring is this person someone I want to play with, someone I want to go deeper with, someone I want to explore and expand and learn more about in relationship? So why not make it more casual, more relaxed, more authentic? In fact, I talked about this in detail um, two days ago, yesterday, two days ago. 
where I was talking about how it's important to be natural and authentic from the get-go. I'm getting back to 100% in the moment. This does tie together, I believe. <laughs> we'll see when I get there. So when you start, start out first, in the first date, first experience, first meeting, which is another kind of way to get there, it's usually a time where you're going to know the other person, you don't know who they really are. So you don't really want to put your, bring your walls down right up front. Now you can be transparent, but still be protecting yourself because you never know when the person you're meeting for the first time is really all that in a bag of chips, you know? They might be somebody less than ideal to be with. So it's good to vet that out early. So investing a lot of time, money, and effort to make the first date special may be a mistaken approach because you might want to save that for somebody who's worth it to you. Does that make sense? So I'd say that, save that for the third, fourth, fifth date, perhaps, where you already start to get to know this person, you start to feel really good about them. You want to play with them, dance with them, express with them. So you set up a really big date for down the road a bit. That to me makes much more sense, by the way. It's a whole, that's a whole new dating approach that maybe, maybe you didn't know before. I've certainly seen people not do that and pay the price for it. So rewinding slightly back to what I was saying earlier and tying it in together. When you have entered that relationship experience from a much more gradual and opening place, you've been opening each time through the dates, when you start realizing this person is going to be the partner you want to be with for an extended period of time, that's when you might want to consider how much you're going to be in that relationship. You stay on the fence like you were in the first date and get to know them from a distance and keep that space. That's not really romantic. It's not particularly intimate. It's certainly not vulnerable. But when you dive into a relationship fully, when you commit yourself to that connection, that intimacy, that real vulnerability, then you're, you're functioning in a relationship, your, your expression in a relationship, and your ability to enjoy and receive is magnified massively. Talking about relationship being 100-100 is about both partners, both partners, not just you, but the other person too. Because again, I wouldn't recommend you overcommit if the other person doesn't. That's very telling right there of your relationship status. If you're both fully in, great. If one of you is in, one of the other one's not, somebody's going to get hurt probably. So you might want to gauge yourself accordingly. But if you want to be in a fully immersive relationship, choose the partner who's going to meet you there. Make sense? But when you're 100% in a relationship, it means that everything is available, both from you and from them, but also what is underneath the surface can come up too. One of the biggest challenges we have in relationships, which we mentioned earlier, is we're afraid to be hurt. We're afraid to be um, at risk of being hurt more accurately by that person. I am very clear for myself what I'm looking for in the future and also with my clients that being willing to that be that vulnerable is the key to having a healthy relationship. But it also means being willing to deal with the stuff if you want to deal with it first. This actually is some of the work I do with my clients, so I'm getting ahead of myself. Hi hey, Stacy, nice to see you. So I look at the screen down there to see what it's different different viewpoint when I'm using a big monitor versus my little laptop <laughs> and my phone rather. So for some people, what reason why they're afraid to go 100 100 relationship is because they're not willing to uncover the demons that they've got buried from years past. And you know what I mean, because we've all, we all got them. The challenge, and this is one of the things I went through myself, so I'm speaking from personal experience here. The challenge for a lot of us is to be willing to face those demons before we get into the next relationship. In fact, we'll drag those demons, that baggage, that unresolved issue stuff, those triggers, those buttons, whatever you want to call them, from relationship to relationship to relationship, and never actually do anything about them. That stuff you're focused on is taking away from your ability to be 100% present with your partner. Taking the time when you're single, especially when you're single, it's easier to do it then, frankly, to find someone who can help you with that, coach, counselor, guide, such as myself, yes, I'm advertising myself, will prepare you for your next relationship with much greater clarity and much greater presentation. It's like taking your car into the body shop and getting all the rust removed and repainted so you look like your car looks like it's best. It's kind of the same thing on an emotional level. <laughs> that makes any sense. Because that's the thing, we tend to take our beaten up emotional car into the next relationship. No, this, that, that now is getting messy. You understand what I mean? If you if you if you drive if you drive your car without taking care of it on and on and on, eventually it's gonna break down. 
if you carry your emotional wounds and baggage, the next relationship, the next relationship, without resolving it, eventually it's going to become a massive weight in that relationship. It's not going to help anybody. So for the sake of your next partnership, the sake of your next relationship, and the sake of yourself to be 100% available to relationship, taking that part of you that's not available and healing it, resolving it, transforming it, is beneficial to all of them, all of the above. It's up to you. Relationships really are 100-100 when you're both willing to commit. At least be what, at least be the partner that can be 100% available by healing your own wounds first, your own stuff that's in the way, and become ready for a relationship. So when you do meet somebody, if they're not 100, you'll already be already be aware of that. And secondly, if they are 100% ready, then you can both join together and have an amazing experience. But again, you ramp up, as I said earlier. You start getting to know them first before you commit 100% in. It's not an instant on switch usually. It takes a little time first. So it makes some sense. That was another, another comment, Stacey. Relationships are our best teachers. Yes, the whole, the whole first single is a good time to, to do, to be, to learn, to grow. Thank you, Stacey. You summed up my whole talk in one sentence. <laughs> but it's true, and I'm passionate about this. This is why I talk about it so many times. This is why this is number 965. In a long series of talks about love and relationships, because I'm passionate about this stuff, and I, that's why I talk to teach this stuff all the time. So if this is, is um, what's what I'm looking for? Triggering for you? Good. If it's waking up to something, good. If it doesn't make any sense to you, I'm really nervous. <laughs> but the reality, <laughs> but for me, the reality is if you do want to get some help, I should say my invitation to you, if you do want to get some help, is to reach out and get the help you need. Thinking about it, pondering about it, stuffing it, sticking it down, avoiding it is not the way to solve it. Because your next relationship, as was shared by Stacy, is the best teacher you're going to have if you don't do with it first. And I'm not saying you should wait to the next relationship because it's not your responsibility of your next partner to heal your stuff. Don't do that to them. Same as it's not your responsibility to heal your, to heal your partner's upset stuff. It's a nice gift to have. But if they bring all their baggage from the last 15 relationships onto your lap, unless you're a therapist, it's not recommended. And frankly, if they come to see you like that, you should be their therapist, not their partner. I was talking to a friend of mine about that on Sunday, about really in relationships now. Unless my partner that I'm looking to go out with or the person I want to date has done this, done a lot of work on their own, I cannot date them, seriously. Because I'll see all the ho I'll see all their wounds, the holes and their stuff that's going on, and it's getting the, again, the way for me. I'd like to be off duty when I'm in a relationship, so to speak. I'd like not to be coaching there, you know? Anyway, that's a sidebar. That's a, that's a little personal aside. So my invitation to you is to reach out for support. I'll put some links in the comments. You can reach out for, to get some help from me. Check those out. Seriously, take a look. If there's something you're feeling like you need some help with, to shift, to transform, take advantage of what I'm putting in the, in the comments, the links that I'm putting there for to help you. This is my daily Facebook Live to, to inspire, to awaken, and to sometimes trigger people, but definitely to encourage you to have more of what you want in your life. If you want more assistance, Definitely watch my broadcast. I'll tell you about those in a moment. And definitely check out the links in the comments. So this is my daily Facebook Live. It goes live at 5 p.m. Pacific time pretty much every day. Excuse me. It's pretty much every 5 p.m. Pacific time. But it's every day, seven days a week, no matter what. I've done one every day now for basically three years, which is why I'm episode number 965. So you can join me tomorrow at the same time, same channel. But also you can watch the replays on my business page on Facebook, which is actually back up. My live broadcasts go live on Barry Selby on Facebook. My business page, which is barryselby.author, is my business page where you can watch the replays of my broadcasts, although Facebook doesn't show all of them, just the first two or 300, which is a good start, but not all of them, so I keep a backup plan. Please, by the way, like my page on Facebook, that'd be appreciated. On my YouTube channel, I have a playlist, and the YouTube channel is Barry, excuse me, is youtube.com slash user slash barryselby. You can subscribe to my channel. There's a playlist on there called Messages for the Masculine, where all of these broadcasts live. In order from newest to oldest, you can search by keyword, you can t play with the titles, find ones that speak to you. And because it's YouTube, it's much easier to sort through and find what you're looking for than it is on Facebook, if you haven't noticed that already. Um, that's where you find my replays. Again, the links will be in the comments that I invite you to check out. Um, as soon as I sign up, I'll type them in so you can have a look. Get some help and support now if you've got some stuff in the way of your next relationships. You know, bring it to them and you can be free. This is my passion, as you may have guessed. It's my service, it's my work, and it's my calling. Take advantage of that. With that, thank you for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow, same time, same channel. Um, yeah, same time will be definitely going on. And I remind you, as always, to please take care of yourself.
I'll see you again soon.